What's good, ladies and gentlemen of YouTube? J Daisy here with the J Daisy Game Channel. Here with a special type of video. We are going to be heavily spoiling Star Wars episode whatever, yearly whatever, eight. That sounds about right. The uh, the Last Jedi. So if you have not seen it, uh, that's probably you know more than likely. Um, this is going to be heavy spoiler character. But here I am joined for the first time ever with another guest, which is weird. Um, with my good buddy Mike, um, and we will be discussing the Last Jedi. We um, just got done seeing it, um, and it. Uh, I would say, I am annoyed. Would be my way of stating it. Um, so, do it away from the mic, Mike. Sorry. Perfect. Um, I think we, we should start off, since you're the guest here, Mike, I will let you get the first word in about what you thought of the movie, as you spill beer literally everywhere except into your mouth hole. Would you like a rag of some sort? <coughs> no. You're just going to throw up in my goddamn <laughs> one? God, you son. <laughs> this is why I don't run a family-friendly and I don't get the ad money. My full opinion, right here. Eh. Very lackluster. Yeah. Wasn't as memorable as a 7th at all. Yeah. To be expected, a little bit, since 7 was coming back. Mm -hmm. And it was introduction to new characters, big twist at the end, you know. Yeah. And this one's just kind of, meh. I was annoyed for about the first half hour that it felt more like a comedy than anything else. I wholeheartedly agree. There yes. was so many stupid little jokes. And and not like just little like I mean there were the one liners, but there's just a lot of slapstick. Yeah. Just and, and there is like in the originals, there's like the slapstick moments and everything. Mm -hmm. But it's confined to two characters for the most part. Because well the first the first one, and I always say this whenever we talk about it is the first one is based off the Odyssey and the Iliad. So T-3PO and R2-D2 are your classic forms of comedy. They're a more dry, they're a more sensible sense of comedy. They're not your standard, oh, I walked into the rake, who's on first, who's on second? It's a more classical. Towards the new ones, you kind of get into the what we would call new age comedy. And this one is so the next level. The I, th I think the worst part, in com when talking about comedy wise very end the little fucking bird not even in the, in the cockpit the, the fucking beginning is like that it's like when he's eating the chicken and he's eating this and the fucking little bird is are staring at him going rah, rah. it's like okay this is it, I would have been fine with it rah, rah, and running but then they pan over to the last one standing there moon eyed mm. and just oh and then they become friends like that's and there's like eight of them in the fucking ship and you don't and, see and they're them all ever nesting. again yeah <sighs> just those stupid little things they just get a chuckle out of people it, that don't do anything for the plot they don't do anything long term like C-3PO and R2-D2, the comedy was there to balance the rise of tension, mm -hmm. at, but this just detracted from the tension altogether. It just... And it, it would be know. every time the tension would start, you would have one of those. Mm -hmm. You know, if you look at episode 4, episode 5, episode 6, the 90% of the movie would be that tension, and like you said, exactly like you say, there'd be a little moment of, oh, comedy. <sighs> yeah, take a Calm. breath, take a breath. You know, Han just got frozen in carbonite. C-3PO say something funny to kind of let the audience down. This never let you get to a chance to get to that. And I, I, there was several parts in that movie where I was just confused. I felt like we just were jumping from scene to scene with not a lot connecting them. Yeah, I was, I was very confused. Talking of confusion, jumping a little bit. Very end. Books are in the Millennium Falcon from the Jedi Order. Mm -hmm. Luke didn't put him there. Ray, Ray must have, but it didn't seem like she was, like she didn't seem like she just wanted to be a Jedi. She just wanted to be taught by Luke. Like she just she, wanted to understand. Yeah, under, like what is this inside me? Like, so I can see, her, it's probably gonna be her stealing the books. Well, and, that but also I really want it to be fucking Yoda who called down lightning 
somehow. Yeah, this exact this defeats that. That's exactly what I was gonna say. This defeats that whole scene, right? I I honestly like that. Uh, that I, part, I wish it, I wish the books were gone. I wish Jedi religion movie, would be gone. I you, you be, would think okay, that's gonna suck. We have a CGI Yoda, which was probably actually somewhat animatronic. Yeah, but. They, okay, if you were to tell me, hey, in this movie you're going to see a Yoda, I would have that would have said that sounds horrible. But out of all the scenes in the movie, I really enjoyed that. I enjoyed somebody else validating because up until that point, you're like, oh my god, Luke is crazy. Luke has lost his way. But the second I saw Yoda doing this, it almost validated what he was doing. See, I I can actually see where Luke was coming from from mm-hmm. the beginning. I I. I agreed with him that the Jedi lived in a silver fucking tower on Coruscant and Mm -hmm. they didn't do jack, basically. They Mm -hmm. had their hands tied by the fucking Senate and all that bullshit. Mm -hmm. Politics. Yeah, yeah. And I can see where he's coming from that way. And just... mm, He's... I need beer. And... To give a little backstory, since we're kind of we kind of glossed over this, um, Mike and I are the same age, and we both I I can only speak for myself. I saw episode one, two, and three in the theaters. I've seen the original ones before that. I can I can say that. I've read the Thrawn trilogy. I think there's more, but I think I've only read the, uh, at least one book, if not a few more. Um, I've read the Bounty Hunter uh, books. Um, I think there was a, the, the Django Fett books and the Bounty Hunter book. Um, and then I've read a few of the comic books. Um, all that's out the window now, obviously, mm-hmm. with Disney being the overlords they are, the supreme leaders, if you will. Um, but that, that's kind of my pedigree. I don't, just kind of giving the audience a little bit of, you know, so we're not, obviously we're two nerds talking about this. So Daisy's at the uh, eighth degree. Eighth, eighth degree I'll, out of ten. I'll accept that. I'll accept yeah, that. Yeah, eighth degree. I'm, I'm more like at about a solid five. I've, I think back uh, probably early 2000s, 2001, 2002, I watched the three original on VHS, and then I watched... I still have the original three on VHS. Yeah? OG VHS. Ooh, really? No, they no, worn out? No altering. No altering on it. So Luke's lightsaber is the same color? Yeah. Or the original yep. color? Han shoots first, and Good. then goddamn uh, the real Darth Vader at the end, and not fucking whiny little bitch. At the oh, end of six, it? the ghost. It's uh, Darth Vader's actual ghost, and not uh, Anakin. Oh, that's yeah. Yeah, I didn't like that when they changed it. Also, yes. when you went into this movie, did you ever think to yourself, "Hey, Mike? Yeah, Mike. I wonder where the blue space milk comes from." I've never wanted to know where the blue smell, space milk came from. I was just happy that blue space milk existed. You know, I might have to turn my dial down to a four, just because I didn't even know what you're saying there for a second. Blue space milk, and blue then space milk. I, I, blue I space don't remember in, in a lot of the movies. Yeah. Um, I, and it's the stuff that Luke pulls out of the big titties. Out yeah, of the, that, yeah. Also, does like, does I, censorship allow for that? Yeah, apparently. Like. There was full, like, they just show, like... I mean, it wasn't nudity. It was an animal. With a nipple and a breast. But how do we... Uh, they're not breasts. They're udders. Just like cows. So... Okay, we can't go down can that show... ra- We can't go down the rabbit hole of what is a breast <laughs> and what is a fucking udder. Well, an udder has multiple... You know what? I did go openings. into this movie with a question, though. Mm-hmm. Who the fuck's Snoke? You know what I walked out of that movie with? Who the fuck is Snoke? Doesn't really matter. I was, honestly, when he started chatting about the second time we see him in there in the, the, after he does his little interrogation, a part of me was really hopeful it was going to be revealed he was somehow Palpatine. Yeah. The way he was that, talking that's... about moving all these pieces, everyone is under my own reign, I know exactly what's going to happen. I was like, that's Palpatine. That is a Palpatine move. Everything that's happened, I've let happen. Yeah. Like, and, and then... They were just like, oh no, you want to know who the fuck he is? Oh, he's dead now. We're, uh, it's, okay, we're moving. All right. Just, just right. push your way through. Just go. Just go. Keep going. Just, we are being joined, uh, by another, um, we're, we'll, we'll put him at the, uh, the fourth and or fifth degree of Star Wars. We are being joined by Troy wheeling in on a chair 
Like he's some diva and he's gonna blow vape smoke. You gotta get closer to the mic, you fucking loser. I have the game as far up as I can go. You have to get it so it registers. Say something so I know it registers you. <laughs> Perfect. Mike, <laughs> does it register you? Okay, we're yep. all we're all somewhat on the register. I'm still gonna turn the game up and I'm gonna Dab forget this. Uh, so oh, oh, barely. Oh, okay, we're now devolving into the H three in about a while. And now we're devolving into the H three H three podcast, and we're all just gonna blow vape smoke into my fucking mic. I don't feel anything. Troy, like I am a trained smoker. I blow it away from people. There's a fan, so this doesn't <laughs> work. But since we're being joined by Troy, Troy, your thoughts on the movie? Uh, overall, without being pessimistic of it being a new big franchise and so on, I like the movie. Do I think it had more potential to be better? Yes, I do. But overall, I do like the movie. If people were to ask me if they should see it, the answer is yes. So, even though scores are annotated and I don't enjoy giving them the things, let's go around and on a scale of 1 to 7, that way we have to be on one side or the other, mm -hmm. give our score for the movie. I will go first. On a scale of 7, I give it a 3. Now, what... Now what's this like seven perfect movie set okay good point let's go with I'll, I'll change my score just a little bit to reflect this a seven is you have to go see this in the theater cancel all your christmas plans go see this in the theater right fucking now one is don't even bother getting it on dvd a three and a four is, a four is get it on blu-ray three is get it on dvd all right i say four on that I say if you get it on a Blu-ray, I am saying you don't need to rush out to the theater and theaters. So since we're going with that, that changes mine just a little bit. Okay. I'm, I'm going to go with a little bit more optimistic. Five, just because... If you got the chance, go to the theater. If you got a chance, okay. don't don't go out of your way. Don't, like... If you're oh, looking... Susie's birthday party this weekend, or Star Wars, go to Susie's birthday party. Like, mm -hmm. do that. Okay. It's an enjoyable movie for the most part. But you can't be too critical of it. If if you are, it just ruins the experience. Then again, it's hard to not be critical of it. it Troy, uh, I'm gonna cheat here and say a five and a half. It's a liquor scale for a reason. <laughs> it doesn't even That's matter sure. either. It's, sure. it's... No, 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 no. If I, I'd probably have to lean closer to a five, but you it, that is with asterisks. Five asterisks with. That is a hundred percent a Troy answer too. <laughs> with the expectation, or don't go in with expectations of it being a movie that's going to blow your mind, because Seven was, it was Seven was surprisingly good, moving from the old franchise and what people thought mm -hmm. and how they thought Star Wars was supposed to be into moving into a new world, a new and, and generation from the of prequels, it. Prequels, which, mm -hmm. as we can yep. all agree lowest tier. I like pod racing. I was a kid. Yeah. So. I enjoy, I enjoy <laughs> yeah. Django Fett. Like, that's why Django Fett, yeah. That's why when we walked out of the theater, I said I would go back and watch two again. <laughs> I enjoy Django Fett. Two was one. Garbage. One, that's a hard sell that, for that, me. That's, that's a hard sell. I would, I'd watch, I'd watch this one, Last Jedi, number eight. I'm 98% over, sure it's recording. Over two. <laughs> so like, original, mm -hmm. then... Seven. Then Mike Mike two admitted and three earlier, and by the way, that he has not seen Rogue One. That is a big one that I I. But that's I not think necessarily it's on Netflix. Okay. It's that, on my list. That necessarily doesn't take that doesn't take away from this. No, I, I figured it wasn't too I was, much to see just because I was it's super, Han Solo story, correct? Yeah. No, no, no. I thought it was. No. Uh, there's Han Solo. Different, different it movie. should be that's the Bonthan ah. story, but apparently we forgot that Bonthans are the ones that stole the Death Star plan, so it's a Rogue One. I was really super happy I didn't have to walk out of the movie theater at the beginning. Yeah. I made the bet that if there was no text crawl in this movie, I was walking out. I, the thing that bothered me the most out of Rogue One was the goddamn no text scroll. Rogue One was an enjoyable movie. I enjoyed but Rogue as One. I, but as I just watched more, it the other week. hearing from more some, enjoyable than 8? No. In my opinion, well, okay, all right. No. In terms of Star Wars universe and progressing, or in terms of Star Wars story, uh, I'm not too invested into older stuff. But I, Rogue One was enjoyable, but it had comic relief that seemed to kind of fit. Uh, but as listening to like some people who are aspiring film directors, 
the main character in it, she ver- she barely holds any opinions on her own and makes decisions. She just kind of goes with the flow where things happen and she does them. She is not a big, strong lead character in it. Yeah, which it it, will, I will agree, Ray and Kylo Ren really shine in this movie. That was very... I, that, that, that I enjoyed the way that... Great. So, am I the only one that walked away from that movie almost knowing that they're brother and sister? Honestly, I didn't get that feeling. I, I Because honestly, it, they went back and forth, boo-boo-doo, did the whole very nicely done, feel you on the other side of the galaxy. And then twice it did that with Luke and Leia. The exact same thing. Not to the same degree, obviously, but the same basic thing. Also, the trailers never show a thing of that. We're wa- I have the trailer on Luke yeah. here. They never show that those two are like communicating across space. No, and there's... And that's... They they definitely left it open ended, mm-hmm. whether to, I, whether they'll oh, they, that's just the ending there. Okay, yeah. whether they'll take that and do the obvious, or whether they'll try to do something really really fun. That's actually hard to tell because with See, big I, franchises like this, they hate to break the mold, and actually directors get very little creative freedom with movies. I don't like think this. I've ever seen a movie that more fit in a mold. Yeah, like, yeah. yeah. Mike yeah. and I were before Troy got here. We were talking about how. The first half hour, I, I think I've seen less jokes in a New Age comedy than in this movie. There was so many jokes in that first half hour. Uh, it just, every time, because we talked about every time the tension would build, there would be a joke. And that, as soon as the tension would get to a point where you're like, okay, I'm invested in this again, break it. Okay, I'm invested, oh, break it. Oh, break it. That, oh, break it. Oh, that, break it. That was probably the, my biggest, that'll be my biggest criticism with the movie, is I like comedy and i think rogue one had a couple of good spots in there with k3po and stuff like that but Mm -hmm. this movie seemed to it seemed to be either too frequent or not in the right places there was it didn't seem like they built tension in a whole lot of scenes before someone made an offhand joke or whatever or a sassy comment back to another person that kind of ruined i'm not one to complain about ruining moods i not too picky i'm not too i'm not picky on ruining moods but that one ruined it (laughs) I would to get back to your question though, Mike, because I've been thinking about this. I would recommend going and seeing Rogue One in theaters or at home before this movie. I enjoyed Rogue One more as a Star Wars movie. Troy was saying as progression of the story, I think that's kind of a moot point because this obviously progressed the story. Rogue One was fil- was in between two, so it can't progress one way or another. I enjoyed it more as a Star Wars movie, and it felt more as a Star Wars movie to me. Um, maybe that's b- just because it a lot of the groundwork is kind of already laid there and we're only working with stuff that is already existing you know Darth Vader is a bad guy uh, we gotta get these Death Star plans how are we gonna get them out of here Death Star or Star Destroyers are flying around um, while as in this one they're doing a lot more groundwork I also want to stop, say uh, I talked to another person that went to the movies with us um, she has only ever seen episode 7 mm-hmm. she has never seen any of the other Star Wars and I really wanted to get her opinion mm-hmm. because the way I, I ignored most of Seven's Falls because it was introducing a new generation into Star Wars. We got to bring in this new, you know, the first three were was one generation. The the next three, the prequels were another generation. This is bringing in a new generation. So you have to have the same beat for beat for four. It really draws people in. So I was really excited for this one. Because, okay, now we can kind of let the reins off. We don't need to go beat for beat. Mm-hmm. So I, I asked her if she enjoyed the movie. She said she did enjoy the movie. I asked her if this explained some more things for her. Or she left with questions. She said, I left with more questions than I came into it with. Mm-hmm. And I, to comment on that, is this? it's Star Wars. Most people don't come into it blind. Fair enough. And... Those people wait for it to come out on DVD and then they watch it with their significant other or another person. They ask questions. They find out, oh, okay, this. Or they just don't watch it. They well, that yeah, it. she was doing that the whole time with asking Michael, you know, what's going on, what's doing this, what's who, yeah. Not this Michael, uh, uh, another Michael. The, the, yeah, the Michael slash two. Um, um, so I think that's a good point of having someone from a that doesn't necessarily have the knowledge that, I mean, we all are bringing kind of different levels. None of us are the uber nerds, I would say. 
no, that know no that have read all the extended universe, that read all the comics. Um, I don't want to toot my own horn, but not I, I know most of it. But I would probably say that I know the most, and I would get blown out of the water very quickly in a Star Wars extended universe um, the competition. But that really doesn't matter anymore. I mean, the, the real crux of the matter is, it doesn't matter going into this if you know the Thrawn trilogy, or you yeah, know I mean, this, the origin of Darth Vader. Um, or if you know... I mean, that's all not canon anymore, so it doesn't... Yeah. It, it's all out the window. It, it doesn't even pertain yeah. to what we're talking about, basically. But we've yeah. talked about this. This is just... Definitely you can draw conclusions. A movie. Yeah. yeah. That's, that's... When they said Dreadnought, though, I got really excited that I would see Thrawn's Dreadnought. That, Thrawn is a... Um, if you don't know, he's from the Extended Universe. He was kind of the First Order before the First Order existed. He was the one that reunited the Empire, that that regained control of a fracturing thing. Um, and he had a very famous Dreadnought. The name kind of... Does, I could show you it. I could draw you it. It looks like a big gun. Um, but it was a very famous Dreadnought. And he was very... A lot of people would say that they really wanted him to be the, the Supreme Leader or what have you. Um, so when they said Dreadnought, I was really excited. And then it wasn't. Also... We talked about this outside the theater, but goddamn, if you want your entire plan to fall, let there be one way for them to destroy it. If you want your plan to succeed, have 80,000 ways for them to destroy it. They're like, oh no, it's a dreadnought. Quick, drop bombs on the middle part of it. Blows yeah. up. Oh no, we have to get past this giant freighter. Quick, send one ship out of it. Like, why did Snoke need to be there, by the way? <sighs> Did, was that ever... Did, no. Did he just want to oversee... The squishing of the Rebellion? Yeah, because that was meant to be the end of the yeah. Rebellion. But so, why does he personally need to be there? Because uh, the Dreadnought was supposed to do it originally. True. So, true. You know, he I'll, sent I'll a Dreadnought dirt. and he sent a couple ships. And then his apprentice fucked it up. Or Also, did, uh, okay, so here's commander. another thing I was confused about. So the Dreadnought fails... And he calls Hux and goes, what the hell happened? Hux goes, we have them on the end of the string. One scene, come back. Hux is in the room with Snoke, and Snoke's going, <laughs> end of string. Oh, uh, ah, ha, ha, funny, Mr. Hux. You, yes, we have them. Did Hux just fly there after telling and tell him the same joke twice? I really don't know what the fuck the string was to begin with. I think he was talking about, okay, even if they jump, they, we they, know where they're going. But th then, how did he get... To, to, how did they... You know what I'm talking about, Troy? You look like, confused. The aircraft go over It, it was the tracker, the tracker they had they to could, go disable and everything. They could but track then, them through yeah. light speed. So mm -hmm. when the dreadnought failed, Snoke called him on the bridge of the giant hologram, and Huck said, Supreme Leader, we have them on the end of... We have the knot tied on the end of the string. Mm -hmm. And yeah, the scene cut... There was some other stuff. We cut back to Kylo Ren in the elevator. And he's on comes out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and they're tosses. laughing and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah, I getcha. Did Snoke fly to... Or did Hux fly to Snoke's ship and tell him the same joke again? Because uh, Snoke's is like, Ah, ha, ha, funny. End of string. Ah, uh, go uh, Get out of here, Hux. I'm going to be a douchebag to my apprentice. While the assumption could be made that he didn't explain his plans in the hologram or on the bridge there, so he had to go personally see him in order to explain it. Or Snoke the... was like, "I'm coming there," and he was there. Yeah. And then he like, "Oh, this is this is what happened." Also, the Millennium everything. Falcon escaping really bothered me because there was a fleet over the planet, right? Like they would have been monitoring for a ship flying away. You know, there was that whole like you there's, know there's space a lot battle of that, though, where it, like oh they're all focused on this one thing. Uh, yeah, I guess it is like, a planet people... they could have flown to the other side. Well, you could make that argument. But there's but... just a lot of that like they're focused all on transports at one point, mm -hmm. and yep. then oh nobody thinks that there's oh, no the windows. Turning... There... There's no windows on the ship. We can't see the little dots flying away. They're like we have our things cloaked. They'll never see us. Space is big. We'll just say it's the camera trick that things appear to be closer than they are. Guys, yeah. those stars are moving really fast. Like, I, ooh, look at the meteor shower. It's like that Family Guy joke. I got some tricks left in my sleeve, and he just moves the Millennium Falcon slightly to the left. All right, all right. So moving on from here, outside of the what we would probably call misplace and overuse of humor mm -hmm. to relieve tension, what about the plot of the story? Like, how do we feel about progression, or how do we feel 
that the movie t- told its story. Where do we I feel know about that? Your story? comment right yeah, out of you the guys, theater you guys was. Go ahead. I know your comment though was right out of theater. What changed yep. besides Snoke Dogg? Yep, that's a good so way. There. That's a good way to start this discussion. Is what? Yeah, what is dip? Like Troy said, what is the progression of the story? Coming out of this, what is different than when we came out of seven? Kylo Ren's in power. Okay. Ray now is the a, Jedi. The Jedi. She's is quote unquote trained. Train. She knows That's what her place. Quote unquote. <laughs> she, as in the trailer, say knows what her place is in the story now. She, yeah, she knows her role. She knows yep. she is the light to Kylo Ren's darkness, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and it's gonna go that way. It's yep. Uh, the rebellion is, is one ship. Is one ship less than four hundred people? L- less than a Besides, dozen, like a dozen people. Yeah. It but, was 400, then transports got shot down, then people died in the battle. It was literally, and, like, and, however and, many and, and, people could fit on the Millennium Falcon. Like, when they were walking, it looked like... like four, let's it say looked 40. Like, it looked like 14 people to me. That was the number I kept rolling with. I'd go with about 40. 40 survivors. Not many. Yeah. Was Decimated. Any, was anyone else mad... Not to derail your commentary, but was anyone else mad that they let Carrie Fisher continue, or they let Leia live? Not, not so mad, just kind of confused, as they passed up several easy opportunities to kill her off, and I wish they didn't have to. I wish she was still around. Oh, yeah, is... Was she, around for the, was she around for yes. at least part of this filming? Yes, they had finished shooting before she passed. Yeah. Okay. For the did, next one, though. The, did they, no, see, right? did no. they CG any of her in this? Nothing that was so obvious I noticed. Because if there was, I didn't notice, although I don't know if it's the way they wanted her to act, but it seemed like a couple of scenes were kind of lifeless in her acting. Like, some of the scenes where she's talking to people, it seemed like she was pretty monotone when she's supposed to be giving something of high importance or emotion. Uh, But that's really hard to say, Rest in peace, Carrie Fisher. Like I don't. I won't make <laughs> it's gonna sound di- sound like a dick making or complaining mm-hmm. about a person who's no longer here. I know, but it's just most of the time if you have your main one of your main stars die, even in a sitcom or a TV romp, you find a nice, respectful way to make to let them pass in the show. Mm-hmm. Or Perfect whatever. opportunity, I think, is for her to switch places with the vice commander. Yes, agreed. Uh, Hadron Haldron. I- I was expecting her to. So, yeah, I was expecting. That, like it. that would have been badass. Mm-hmm. Let Carrie Fisher go in that blaze of fucking glory. Oh god, that was she takes beautiful. care of the fucking fleet. Oh my god, takes Which, out the. Do, do we we need to go over the one of the probably biggest plot holes? One ship goes light speed through about eight right. other do star wanna... destroyers. What the fuck? When in Rogue One, the a ship starts to go into light speed and just bounces off a star destroyer. It's at the end of the big fight scene when Darth Vader's ship comes in. They're like, everyone punch it, and the one literally goes, vroom, disappears, and bounces off the Star Destroyer. Is it a small like fighter? That it's like a enjoy? transport ship. Yeah. All right. So it's not. It's not a. It's big, not a just... Mon Calamarian uh, battle cruiser. No, it is not. So, but if the I guess that kind of helps the plot hole there. That I mean, if the size of the ship matters. Although, Snoke's ship was fucking massive. Oh my god. All the Star Destroyers. And then their ship, probably half the size of a Star Destroyer-ish. Even, for, yeah. Oh my even god. less than that. It is pretty From small. what I, kind of, the feel of it gave, because they always show it in the foreground. They never show it in the but background at all. But, like, that med ship, that we see that in. The god. med ship and the sub- other support ship. Like, Don't you see that in the prequels? or something. I feel what? like we've seen the med ship before and it seemed way bigger then. So There's been other just, med ships. It, I mean, it's it's based off a Nebulon B frigate, which is the ones you see in like episode 6. The like long skinny one with like one little bridge connecting it. And those die all the time. They're kind of cannon fodder, but they're most of the time medical ships. Um, these are very different. Like, every every iteration of this movie, everything's just... All the ships are just slightly different. Like... The the not the medical ship that gets blown up the ship after it looks a lot like the hammerhead ships that were technically in the old republic and then they used them in Rogue One, um, mm-hmm. so yeah no it was just a, I don't think it, it might have been like one of their ships in the fleet in the last one but I yeah. not that exact ship. I think yeah the sense of scale I think it was a big ship but compared to everything else that the 
they had brought there, it, it seems small. I, I would also, just because I love playing Devil's Advocate and playing both sides, is that the one, like, couple things that I can see fixing this plot hole is that the ship is bigger than a transport ship, than the one that hit Rogue One, or that mm -hmm. was in Rogue One, mm -hmm. and that it was heavily armored. I mean, those blasts took out that base in, like, three, four hits mm -hmm. in the very beginning. So, and it survived, like, its shields kept up, even with a barrage on them. And they had to run them out of fuel, basically, to get close enough yep. to even do fucking anything. So, it was heavily armored, and it was a powerful ship, mm -hmm. I would say. It, that it is well balanced on, yeah. on all the scales. So that it would have enough power mm -hmm. to go through it. But, destroying eight Star Destroyers and Snoke's ship, though. That. Mm. Um... um Quick, before anyone says anything, I've been doing research ever since we brought it up. I cannot find anything that says there's CGI Leia. Okay. I, I'm right. seeing just a lot. I'm just looking over some articles here. I'm seeing a lot of stuff about people talking about the tribute to Leia and that the whole, um, they might have done some reshooting that she might have had to be mm -hmm. CGI in. Um, but it's just, I cannot see anything that says like 80% of her was CGI. Gotcha. So I believe they had wrapped up filming, mm -hmm. primary filming when she passed, but they might have had to do like when they did a few reshoots, they might have had to yeah. CGI over what she was already mm -hmm. there for, as far as that but goes. I that, the scene with the ship going light speed through it I actually I really actually don't care that they did it movies aren't based off of rational decisions, and something like that, I don't care if it kind of breaks the rest of the universe i just it was a bit much on all the shit it blew up but it's timing it's impact the way it was filmed i think and that how was... how the commander gave mm -hmm. her life or vice yep. vice admiral yep i, apologize. I think that was one that we of never the... saw other than mm -hmm. this movie. i think yeah. that was one of the best scenes of the movie it hit incredibly hard and she I, had some, I, I will say, she had some very nice just character development just mm -hmm. i was would... that was really fast and act that just okay. dot 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 uh, it two, got two things mm -hmm. to where you're like she's yep she is basically an apprentice to Leia yep I would say she's yeah. like uh, yeah and it would have been cool to see Leia be in the ship and her take over and be the Leia figure okay two yeah. things I I agree with you guys I enjoy I may have not liked the movie but I did enjoy that scene caveat it goes back to what we discussed before the movie where all ships are on the same plane. If that, yep. if that B would have just, like, quick left thrusters and left it up and went, boom, and just, she's gone. Mm, it, big ship can happen. I know, yeah. I know. Manu yeah, yeah. Maneuverability. And, and second thing, I, just, I really do agree with you. There was only two people in that movie I really enjoyed. Her, because she just shot down Poe like it was her fucking job. Of, I don't like you. I, I like when main people are either killed or just, like, they're... what Everything you know about them is flipped on the head. Yep. Dynamic and, and characters. Poe was very yep. much, like, the impulse fighter yep. whatnot. Just yep. flip, like, no, you, you can't just do shit. Yep, and, yep. I really did like, okay, we need to be organized. That's the only way we're going to win this. We have to be organized. You know, mm -hmm. um, the only other person I liked, and I'm being kind of brash here, was the fucking traitor smuggler guy, the little stutter man? Mm. Oh, the hacker. the guy, the guy the, that the sold coder. them out at the end. Yep. Yeah, I really enjoyed his Benicio part. Del Toro, great fucking. Actor. I really enjoyed oh, his 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 notion of it doesn't fucking matter. Mm -hmm. You guys, them guys, it and that's kind of the overarching story. Like he kind of summed up what Luke was trying to say, except. Luke is trying to tackle it on the side of the Force. You know, the mm -hmm. Force is always going to be in balance. The spiritual versus the material. This guy just went, it doesn't matter. If they die, somebody else will come in. You, there's always going to be fighting. Why? And I'm kind of reading a little bit more into what he said. but he, I want to say you're off base. But all. also, but side note, he's like, oh, he's, he's showing all these holograms of like, oh, here's an ATST, here's a TIE fighter. Oh, no, an X-Wing. The X-Wing was originally an Imperial design. That was from the, the Extended Universe, so that's a little bit... Because in the Extended Universe, the Rebels go and steal the first X-Wing that was a prototype and then build their fleet out of that. So the X-Wing was originally a... was supposed to be a long reconnaissance ship for the Empire. The Rebels stole it. Anywho. So, but, I, 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 yes. Looking I, at other alien language and everything, and he could just yes, be like... Yes. In, in this, the, in this the, form, we no one knows that, and it's outside of it, so therefore it doesn't matter. 
But, yeah, I really did enjoy his... It doesn't matter. I, I, at the end of the day, I'm making money. I really liked that they didn't take the easy route and had him be the one that blows everything up and saves them. And, oh, no, good guys are good. Yeah. I didn't, got, I didn't, yeah, I didn't I was, like that they had BB-8 driving an ATS I was ATS almost team. kind of expecting the... the I did, too. That guy, that trailer yeah. guy, the... I, I was like, it. oh, here comes the easy solution. You know, the good guys always win. Mm-hmm. No, that guy fucked which, off. Which I want to know, like... The guy with the red plum blossom and whatnot. Like, was he the guy in the Was casino? he the guy, or was Benicio del Toro the guy always? And it was just confusion and mm, what the fuck. Shit, I have no I want to. The way yes. I interpreted it was, the guy with the red blossom was supposed to be the one they were supposed to get. They got this guy, and he, he sold them out. Maybe no. now that I say it, probably because Maz wouldn't have sent them to somebody that would have. Sold them out. Sold them out. Also, ain't it convenient they were able to go to the casino planet, get this guy, and come back just in the nick of time? I, I, I was like, going that way. Oh, yeah, God, guys, we have 18 exactly hours. 18 hours of fuel. That's movie logic. Though. I know. And that is being that is kind of being nitpicky. I did like the, the casino planet, the idea that all these people are, you know, rich War because mongers. of... But I, no, I would have been right happier or right. profiteers. Yeah, I would have been happier if it would have been not just Imperial. Like, if they, they would have doubled down on that idea of war is just war, they would have been like, oh, these are senators. These are people that are also sympathetic with your cause. Well, that, that that's when uh, they I, hit I it on think, the trip I didn't back. see any just Imperial stuff. I, no, there was no, no, there, there was no stormtroopers. Yeah, there was, was no, no branding. So yeah. there, it could have been. Yeah, but I would have just liked that they would have said that. Yeah. Like, if, you know, if, they're, if they were going to go with this idea that war, it doesn't matter. Everyone's in it to make profit. It's a great money thing. It would have just been nice if they would have been like, oh, or blatant about it. Yeah, I, I would have a just l- a little tap in that direction. Yeah. Or um, if they would have been like, the ship that we're on is a Republic senator, like because they're like, oh, look at these schematics. Wonder who owned this. Also, who just leaves that shit on them? Anywho, like, oh, it's on your private fucking ship that's on a valet that shouldn't. The hacker. I really it's good enough hacker to get that shit. I really expected uh, him to say, oh, you know, when he's like, I need pay- p- 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 payment. To BB-8 been like, oh, BB-8 already took care of that. Like, spits out a shit ton of gold. That's right. what I thought they were going to do. But No, he wasted it all on knocking out guards. Which, uh, me and Troy had this discussion in the car. Is that one thing that kind of bugged me is BB-8 just pulling shit out of nowhere. Yeah. Just 30 fingers into electrical so- sockets. Also, a we're in a galaxy then... far, far away and we're still using fucking fuses that I have in my house? Like, those are, like, fucking resistance fuses. Yeah. Uh, yeah, there's... I don't know. There's... You know, because, like... It's also the same way, like, no... Not everyone has, like, a phone or a radio or a connector. Mm-hmm. Or, like, anything like that. Like Basic form of communication, yeah. Yeah, it's stuff like that. It's, Except Poe and uh, the Finn. They have their communicator. Oh, yeah. Um, BB-8 shot it at him at the end there. Yep. Also, the flux capacitor. That's the the main. That's what yeah. I it's, it's just. We quick. We need to go six. I was thinking uh, <laughs> Iron Man two when he makes his own element, the triangle. Oh deal. yeah. And he and shines. And, yeah, I was thinking that. Yeah. Yeah, fair enough. I've never seen a Marvel movie, so yeah, you can go second dick. Yeah, fair enough. Yeah. I guess uh, I can't uh, really say that anymore. War doesn't matter, Daisy. I used to be able to say, you know, the only Marvel movie I've seen is Deadpool, which is so, which is Sony, which is Fox. I guess I can't say that anymore. <laughs> um, so we've been pretty negative. Let What is a good takeaway from this? You know, not necessarily something you really enjoyed about the movie, but what is something that you are walking away from going, I am really glad that blank happened or I'm really glad that blank more is going to happen I really like the explanation of and deeper development of the Kylo Ren and uh, Luke Skywalker's relationship mm-hmm. like mm-hmm. Luke like come from and you can see it from Kylo's perspective he doesn't know Luke wasn't gonna mm-hmm. kill him at all he just woke up to his mentor with a lightsaber lightsaber held above him in an attack mm. position. 
Yep. And that would make me scared and mm-hmm. fearful for my life and willing to do anything. Yeah, you, you get the confusion between there because before it was, oh, Luke messed up and Kylo re- Kylo turned bad and killed everyone. Well, now you see that, like, yeah, Kylo was going to the dark side. Luke, out of impulse and being scared, was going to kill Kylo. and then, he's seen it happen before. And then completely regretted it, but by that point the damage was done in his two way. And it was... Before. Well, he... He knows his father turning okay, to the dark fair side. Enough. Yeah. Fair enough. Okay. And so he knows what will happen. Mm-hmm. Yeah, fair enough. Um, I did like the idea that there were two sides to that story. I really liked that they flipped it twice on you. They flipped it once of him saying, uh, he just attacked me. And then, and, and, and then him being and, like, he had a lightsaber over me. And then, no, I just, I am human. I had a moment of hesitation. Mm-hmm. And I, I like how... It subtle differences in the look in the eyes in the memory recalls. Yep. How one look like, like anger. Sif, yep. Sif, mm-hmm. anger, black, ready to kill, and one was like crying. Did anyone yep. else notice that Kylo's scar on his face changed throughout the whole movie? Like it was getting healed. It like, got at the beginning. It was like carbon fiber, yeah. and then yeah. it got healed, and it was smooth. When it, and then at the end was it battle, it was like blacker. Um, it? Yeah, in Knights of the Old Republic. Sorry, I keep going back to that. But the more you become a Sith, your veins start to show in your skin. Like, they start to turn... If I, you did go full, notice, I did notice he was looking a little bit more... Darker. Like, black. Yeah. yeah. Like, there, it looked like he had, like, bruising on the yep. right side of his face. Yeah, yeah. right side of I his face. I don't know if that was a, what they were trying to go for, but that's what it really showed to me. Because, like I said, in the if you went full Sith, you would your veins were, like, black. You were It was like a clear... People coursing through. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, like, your eyes would start to sink in. So, like, at the final scene when he's attacking Luke in that final battle scene that I wasn't the biggest fan of, um, it, it seemed a lot darker. His eyes seemed a lot more sunken in. You could see the anger. I really liked that. I didn't like that Luke was a... Uh, the, uh, uh, that, I actually, I thought it was kind of neat. I, re- I, I really liked the idea, like, it, it kind of boggled my mind, like, I, it, it twisted in the fact that they show Ray looking into the pool and saying, there's Luke's X-Wing. They showed that. Mm-hmm. And that would have been just an easy, like, yep, he showed in his X-Wing, mm-hmm. like, he's there. Yep. And he, he traveled all this way. No, he gets over, he already reconnected with the Force, but he delved fully into it became he brought back he was a master of the force cut himself off when he attacked kylo and then he reunited with the force and probably stronger than ever with the force then when he went fully into it and was able to i don't want to say astro project because that's not the right terminology because he put a physical presence in a different place that was light years away would you what i would have liked and i want to know if you would have liked this more if it would have never cut back to him on the island. If it would have just been him, every, everything else was the same, everyone saw him, the big, you know, everyone, all the ships shooting at him, and then he just fades away, and Luke is just, and then they go, Luke is gone. They would have never had him show, see the double suns, like I'm back on Tatooine, and mm. now I devolve into the Force. No. If he would have just devolved into the, he would have, like you said, used his full power and been come one with the force, but instead of just disappearing, use his last time to go there and do that. I think the way they did it, it cements the fact that he was back with the force. Because if he had just shown up and fought and stuff like that, and then had disappeared, it's like, oh, he's he's gone to the forest, he's been there, or whatever. With the scene of him on the island. It's showing him. It's showing he's with that the inc- origin of the force. Yeah, he's too. it's in, it's the fact that he's incredibly in depth with it. At would that you point. would we argue that that is the strongest show of the force <clears throat> that we have ever seen in Star Wars? From Luke, probably. No, from ever. From from ever from the movie, just the movies. Hell yeah, just the movies. There's no other because up until that, I would have said it would have been Making either Ben f- or Yoda disappearing into the force. Yeah, because There's no one, one thing that really surprised me was Ray when she went like with when she was on the stone with Luke and she came up wet mm-hmm. from going to the geyser and she, he said you jumped right in and came out like she teleported basically right because it shows her the geyser coming out 
she's on top of the mountain. Mm-hmm. She comes up. She's wet. Not, I didn't. Not I didn't. I anything. didn't take it as a. She jumped into it and well, came back out. I just took it as she was experiencing it and she got wet from it. Same as, uh, not wet as in dirty, but wet. Um, None of us were I, I was. dirty, Justin. Um, wet as in the same way that Kylo got wet on the other side of the universe. Yep. That way, like <clears throat> I'm experiencing this. Oh no, I have water on me. Because Kylo had that same thing where she was in the rain. And then he was suddenly wet on his space base, wherever. I guess I didn't yeah. notice that. Yeah, yeah, because yeah. he he, br- he brings down his glove and there's water and oh, he, like, I he crushes was, it. Uh, I thought he was crying. No, that no. That's he rain like grabs. He like ru- he like puts it in his hair. Or something. He also has very oily, sweaty looking hair at all times. Basically, <laughs> a lot less mask. A lot less. I do no I, more mask. I will say that is a part I really liked was him. He basically gave up his pursuit of being Darth Vader. He is being his own. Mm-hmm. Man, let at the that past point. die. Yeah, let the past die. Let the good die. Let the bad die. Nothing matters. With and that is the very big overtone. Although this scene just reminded me, he couldn't kill his mother. No, he couldn't. And that is one thing he couldn't do. Going back to that, what the fuck with Leia? Being the f- space Jesus. Space and, Jesus. And I, yeah, that was a bit much. I, I was really you expect- die in space. That. Simple. The, the force doesn't just allow you to not live. There with wasn't oxygen like a button or, or, and you couldn't even use the atmosphere. thing of like there was like a bubble around her. Like she was an airbender, and like she was, the she, whole time she's she like literally well, went frozen in space for about that, ten that, seconds. Well, space doesn't kill you immediately. It's it, ten to thirty seconds, something like that. Yeah, that she was that out long there for the ten to thirty seconds. Yeah, it was that. I, that was a bit much. I wish much. I would have much rather had someone go out and grab her and bring her in than have her force pull Fly. herself back yeah. into it. And I'm, I'm, I'm like, Leia has a strong connection to the force, but you've, n- you've really never, never seen, seen her, her use the force. Yeah, you've never it, seen her actually. Yeah, and like use this, this was the first movie that, other than like feel experiencing things, mm-hmm. like she mm-hmm. feels where Luke was on F- in episode where Darth five. Vader was. Yeah, but she, so she. That tells you that she is sensitive in it, but you exactly like you guys said, you never see her wield it in a powerful. And she could, and I'd be totally fine with her doing something like that later. But that scene didn't really feel like it merited it. Particularly, that was pretty early on in the movie too. Like, I, yeah, I, that was like the first. That was the first, first half an hour. Yeah, or so on. Mm, no, how long was, was the first movie? Three. Yeah. It we got out of there at 9.45. 9.45. Was we went in at 7.20. Mm, well, yeah. I mean, after previews. Yeah, there was about there was 15. 15 to 20 minutes of previews. Cause I, I looked so, at my watch four times during this movie. I, I wanted to, but it was in my back pocket and I had to move. Yeah. Mm-hmm. The, I, yeah. I looked at my watch four different times in this movie. And it was very hard to tell where... Like, most, you can definitely... Okay, Act 1. Act 2. Mm-hmm. And then Act 3. This was Act 1. Act 1. Well, like the whole act movie, one, I was... Because they show it so many times in the trailers that we're watching. The whole, like, we're on the salt plane. And mm-hmm. I thought that was going to be, like, Act 1. You know, I, le- I even leaned over to you and said, Hoth is supposed to be at the beginning of the movie. So, like, halfway through the movie, I'm like, we haven't even had this big battle scene that's supposed to be coming. Mm-hmm. Like, where is it? And... Yeah, they just... It was on the end. Oh, and we also have a portable Death Star beam. I mean, miniaturized Death Star tech. That was a were... drill from Avatar. <laughs> that, that, was, yeah. the, uh, that drill was kind of anticlimactic because they had the whole build-up of like the partial it beam. It blows the, like a small... I thought it would blow up the size whole of this room. It's like size a, it's of this like room. A tw- I thought it was going to blow like, the door. It's like a 20-foot door and it's it just like... All right, 20-foot hole. And like here's this like massive few hundred-foot door. Which, one thing, when uh, Poe and uh, Mechanic Girl... Fuck Jade? Ru- Rose. 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 Rose or Ruth? I heard it both ways. I think it's Rose. I think it's Rose. Uh, they, she crashes him out of the beam mm-hmm. for some fucking reason. Even yep. though if he had, crashed she was on the other it. side of the, the beam. She had turned around. How did? Well, if we're okay, I don't want to get into Speed semantics of stuff like that. But the beam slowed him down. Sure, yeah, because yeah, yeah. it was back. melting everything. Yeah. What was his plan too? Was he just to ram right into it and basically cause it to backfire? I think or it's, explode. It was, yeah, yeah. I I was interpreting it as he would have been melted before he even got yeah. there. I mean, like, it was fucking already melting other shit down the. Yeah, it was melting his barrels and stuff on his ship. Yeah. So. 
I don't know what his fucking plan was. As you were talking, you were saying something. Again, a lot of reality distortion type of things Mm -hmm. in this movie. Uh, But you could see from an overhead shot that there was at least 10 or 15 soldiers outside of vehicles scattered around. Yep. Watching them. And they crash into each other right next to the fucking vehicles. Where the fuck are the stormtroopers? Yeah, he gets out and runs to her vehicle, and there's nothing. That yeah. definitely crossed my mind. And yeah. then gets her all the way back before anything. Like, yep. No soldier comes out and goes, You're dead, we got, Rebel we, Scum. Yeah, we got... Or none mm-hmm. of the ships go, Hey, guys, there's one move. Right? There, there's a lot of just, Focus on the big target. Focus on the big target. No, mm-hmm. he's, he's a very... Oh, he, and, and he's he, a very... They're very bad tacticians. Well, I've played a lot of real-time mm. strategy games, and you don't send your whole force after one thing, and send your whole force after you don't you concentrate small groups. Well, if we were to make a comment on this, it's not because of that's the army's me. negligence; it's due to leadership. That's what I'm saying. And that's he's your a, thing. He's You're a bad tactician. Where this is down to Hux like is, Kylo's. Hux is bad, and Kylo is very focused, narrow-minded on yep. what he wants Hux to do. Would Hux is probably a be bitch. Hux is a bitch. And that's... And, um, yeah. and the whole rabid dog thing, I don't see Hux as the rabid dog. I see Kylo as the fucking rabid dog. So that comment by Snoke to Kylo threw me for a loop for a second. I understood just because Kylo had that such a big shift at the end that he went from being the kind of crappy bitch dog to, I'm done with this, I need to change. And Hux is just a little bitch, a yes man the whole time. Yes man, but he's not a rabid dog. I wouldn't no. call Hux a rabid dog. I don't remember that he line. Of, he doesn't just attack shit. He doesn't freak out like Kylo No, if does. anything, he's like the one who thinks the most. You guys know <laughs> that yeah. Andy Serkis is Snoke? Makes sense. Um, he's we're on a, IMBD right now. and He it could has, be Ray. It is, a, it is currently a 7.9 out of 10 on IMBD. What, what about did, Rotten Tomatoes? Uh, I haven't got that far. Um, I was looking to see if it was Rogue. Maz makes an appearance, and she is mm-hmm. one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight on Billy. She was in there for in what, thirty what? seconds. If that, also C three PO lost his red arm, and it really bothers me. No, they finally painted it. Did he have the red arm in seven? Yeah, yeah because he's he like did. Master Han. It's me, C three PO. Oh, As you he... might not have recognized me with my red arm. See, yeah, that yeah, was yeah, a, yeah. that was a good comic section in there. Yeah, like I like that. That, that yeah. was classic. That was mm-hmm. classic. Yep. Uh, but that Rose was, Tico, yes. But that was right as like a really intense uh, scene was winding down. It it yeah. wasn't right in the middle of it. Yep. Uh, Rotten Tomatoes. They didn't like. They took raids. See, three PO pops up being like, "Ooh, master. Rotten Tomatoes has it at ninety three percent, fifty six percent of audience liked it. Mm-hmm. I liked it. Do I think it could have been better? Yes. I will. It could have been way giving, better. Giving tooting our own horn a little bit. I feel better about it talking about it now. Yeah, I feel better right now than I did walking out of the theater. We should go watch it again. I, 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 I ma- it I needs another that, watch. Yeah, mm-hmm. I, I want to watch it again right now. Mainly because I was so burnt out by halfway through the movie. I was just I nothing nothing after about halfway through. I was just done with it all. After all the stupid humor. After I was literally looking around yeah. at everyone else trying to figure out if I was the only one annoyed. I, I, I saw you look at me several times. I was just where like, I'm well, just sitting there, just like. What a joke! What? Yeah, I was just, I was just to the point where I'm like, what, what is going on? So I, yes, I think I need to go to it another time. Now that I know, okay, here's the pacing. I have it. I can focus on things. I'm not gonna get derailed every time they decide to show a puffin, every time they decide to uh, make another stupid joke. I do like their concentration on the animals. I will say that their, like, their view of nature and everything in it. Like the crystal, crystalline critters, which at first, like in my mind, it, it, like oh, crystalline critters, that's a stupid name. But then I'm like, oh, if I'm on an alien planet and I see those, I'm gonna call them crystalline critters. Mm-hmm. That that that's what I'm gonna call them. The, I thought of the foxes from Avatar. The so. puffins, yeah. I feel like were or whatever they are, I think they're less distracting than I was originally thinking. They were definitely in there, but I just kind of like glossed over. What kind of threw me off in the movie is there's so many steps of where it seems like, oh, everyone's going to die or this person's going to die that it never felt like there was a huge, big climax. Like, it was always kind of trying to push for a serious, or at least after the beginning, that I'm like, well, where's the real big 
climax here. Yeah, the final battle, but they've had a bunch of close calls for the entire thing. Like, I felt like it was... It, it was too many. Too many. Yeah. So here's kind of a question we're less qualified to, a- to answer, but I, I, I'm going to ask it anyway. So the director of this movie was Ryan Johnson, who has directed... His IMBD only gives him credit to 11 movies, mm-hmm. uh, one of which is most notably Looper's, um, Brink, uh, and that's about the... Wait, Brink. 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 Well, which? Brink? Uh, not the shitty video game. Well, not shitty. The video game was great for like no, two uh, weeks. No, it looks like 2005 movie Brick? crime drama. Oh, yes. Oh, Brick. Um, Brick. And Breaking Bad. He directed three episodes of Breaking Bad. Um, based on what you've seen, if you were Disney's CEO, walk and you just got out of the premiere of this movie, you know, J.J. H- Abrams, you don't have him. Mm-hmm. You have this director. Would you hire the same director to direct the next one? Do you feel like the direction of the movie is what was wrong and that because th- obviously the director plays one of the most pivotal roles in the filming of the movie and the direction but and everything that goes with it. I, I think me and Troy are going to agree on this. I, I think I would rehire him. Okay. Not, not I would. I, I can't say as a no, yeah, director. This just, is if you were in charge of Disney. All right. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but there's a lot of things you would change before the director uh, of uh, Star which Wars. Which money pile would I like to swim in today? Uh, uh, <laughs> the briefcase I would giving rehire Sony. Him because I'm willing to bet he was the reason the character progression was as good as it was. Okay. I bet his one thing that he probably didn't do was was as much uh, comedy. I bet that was from higher ups. Gotta make it a little more yep. family friendly. Family friendly, get it fun, get it fun. You can't be too serious so. these days. You know, we're going through a serious time in this country. Mm-hmm. Was can't it have real was, feelings for was around. Jake, was uh, seven more? Would you say seven's more serious? Obviously, yes. more serious, but it still had too much comedy. Okay, for I'd my liking, for my remembrance. No, that, of that's it. that's a legit. I I'm legit question. Wondering if you would say seven is more serious than this. One. I would say, and this, we've taken a more comical. I would say this movie should have been more serious. Okay. And if you had cut out the comic relief parts or toned them down, it mm-hmm. would have been more serious and had a harder impact. But. Due to that, it seemed disjointed. You never really fell into it before. It's like, ah, that was a joke. Yeah, that wasn't that exactly funny? what Mike and I were saying. That every time, the like in episode five, four, five, and six, which are more classical mm-hmm. forms of comedy, the tension would build, and your comedy would be to let the audience calm back down mm-hmm. before your next tension building. This, the tension could never build because it always got broke by a stupid yes. joke that would. Pull the audience out too quickly. Yeah, I wouldn't play so that on the same thing, director just... and listening to people who are more into industry. Exactly. Like, we're with not such a giant franchise as this, mm-hmm. with so There's much money being movie. dumped into it, he, uh, you're pretty much, I feel bad for the director because mm-hmm. he's tied by the wrist. Oh, I, yeah. He has very little creative freedom with this. Fair like, enough. if. Yeah. Whether that be filming or probably uh, post-editing, that's where a lot of the movie magic happens. As I recently found out, the original Star Wars was saved into edit. Mm-hmm. The original cut of it was awful, and all these big directors who got invited to it hated it. Mm-hmm. It was slow, confusing, stuff like that. All saved into edit when they re- went back through it again. This could have been better with the edit. All the parts were there, but being tied by the hand... By, tied by the wrist. Yeah, it's Disney. And yeah. nope. big money, big franchise. They don't want to upset anyone. They want to get... They, they, they can't shake it. And that's what I was really hoping they would do with this, is throw convention out the window and have something that's big and upsetting. And no one saw it coming. That's what I was hoping for. But you can only take so much with something like this. Want to take a guess at uh, early predictions of uh, what uh, we got for an opening weekend box office? How about cost of movie? Uh, uh, I got opening weekend sales brought up right now. Cost of sales. Mm, uh, I actually uh, have no idea. $1.2 billion, I don't know. What? No, the, no, the <laughs> they did uh, not recover their <laughs> la- latest acquisition with this movie. Um, the, I, I the, did, okay. the most a movie has made was seven at, like, uh, half a billion dollars or something like that. So it was four hundred. This, is, this obvi- is probably three hundred and fifty. Obviously, yeah. we are still in the opening weekend, but most places are still. Um, gross U.S. as of the seventeenth was two hundred twenty million dollars. Um, cumulative worldwide gross is four hundred fifty million. Wow! So almost double uh, international what it is made domestically. Uh, do we um, know cost on? I am looking for that right now. It's. Uh, uh, 
keep talking. I'd say the CGI. One hour and fit one fit one hundred and fifty two minutes of screen time. There's only two hundred twelve, two hours and twelve minutes. Really? Two, two. No, I'm bad at math. How many minutes? This is why I switched to culinary school. Um, How many minutes? Two hours, one hundred and fifty two. I think thirty two minutes. One fifty two. Yeah. Two hours and thirty two minutes. Yes, yeah, that's it. Jesus Christ. But uh, yeah, I. I'm also four beers deep. Fair enough. There's Resistor Bomber Pilot, Trivia. Uh, I feel none like of Carrie Fisher's scenes in the movies were cut out of following her death in 2016. That's from IMD. See, I, I, one thing, I this is kind of good. Uh, Fast 7? Is yeah, that the one, last one with Aaron Paul? Oh, uh, yeah. Well, uh, uh, wrong name, but yes. Aaron Paul. Oh, shit. <laughs> Again, four beers. Yeah, you're fine. And I haven't. But continue. You know, uh, yeah. What the fuck was his name? Paul Walker. I Paul Walker. <laughs> I had to think about it too. <laughs> oh, God. Again, not nerds. The Stormtrooper. Or more nerds. Okay, than continue. Not nerds. But uh, one thing I really liked at the end of that movie was mm-hmm. his send off. Mm-hmm. Was them diverging on the road. Just really nice way to end that series. Yep. And I don't know what we're going to get with Carrie Fisher now. Mm-hmm. I don't know how they're going to end that. And that is. Probably one of my biggest letdowns of that is that I didn't um, want to see it happen, but I wanted to see a very nice. So they really way had the like, perfect r- opportunity. At so this is there. trivia yeah. from IMBD, but it's fitting for what you just said. Um, so quote: Prior to her death in December 2016, Carrie Fisher has been expected to appear, appear in episode eight. Though Fisher's family granted the rights to use recent footage of Fisher for Star Wars Episode Eight, Fisher will not appear in the film and Lucas Films will not digitally generate new footage of her. Nine. That's nine. IX is nine. You're right. I went to public school. So eight will have her. Yes. Still. I think... Well, this was eight. Nine. This was eight, yeah. This was eight. Nine so she's will not good. have... She will. Okay. Some. Some, right? but it's just some. reused footage, not CG. Yeah. I think they... If after that, I think... If I were the team, I would have recut and refilmed that end to where she was the one taking the ship into the giant destroyer, whatever mm-hmm. the hell it was. Yoda with the lightning, it's the first time we've ever seen a light side person use force lightning. But I don't feel I, like I that's don't force just, light. I, that's it more, was, that was that's, natural lightning. Yeah, that's more yeah, uh, like call the storm. Um, that's more storm bending. Mm-hmm. That's more uh, um, natural. Did you guys see the natural. Jedi books were yeah. on the Millennium yeah. Falcon? Yeah. So we, those aren't and I, this was we could discuss this earlier. Like, okay, they're gonna have Ray, who had stolen them. That's that's the obvious. But I really wish it was you don't Yoda. think Chewie did it. I don't think Chewie did it. I don't think he did. I think he was too busy eating birds. I think Chewie <laughs> was bored out of his fucking mind on How that. How long rock? were they there? A week, I'm saying yeah, two weeks, a, week. a month, at least a couple. I'm days. thinking at least a month. No, it was a couple of days. I would say a week. She followed them around for a bit. They left at the end of the last one, and mm-hmm. then. They the there's probably a day or two, and then the Imperials find you left at the beginning when it explained this. But they uh, the Imperials have found their base, so they are evacuating their base. Uh, Empire finds them, so not the Empire First Order, um, finds them. They retreat, flying 18 hours, and they come in at the last second. So at least four days, at least four days. I still think it's a month. I I'm not sure if they knew like from the last movie. I can't remember. Did they know where the base was? Did they have an idea where the rebel base was going to be? The, the opening crawl said that they had just found it. They just found it. So they, it they, could have been a month, and she had been spending that month, and we were just seeing the past kind of keeping up. And this one thing I have a problem with movies and stuff sure. is tr- timelines, mm-hmm. is how they do yeah. that. And it, it, it seemed rushed for um, that. But her they, following him around, I don't think Luke would have had that just turn of heart, that, that oh, yep. Maybe I should train her this way. No, it it probably took a while for him turning around and seeing her communing with the Force more and more. Yeah. So this is very typical Disney. I cannot find How much anywhere um, price, but that's very Disney. Disney normally kind of keeps that stuff close to the vest till at least like a year out. Um, just because that way that, you know, your board meeting on Monday... Where everyone convenes to talk about your latest acquisition of fifty-two billion dollars, they can't point at. You can only 52. point at two point one. Uh, so I thought it was fifty-two, but yeah, something close to that. 
it might be rounding up. Well, that point one is a million dollars. Yeah. Or a hundred. I'm getting sorry. A hundred million. I'm getting that from the no. So I but so they might have been rounding up a little bit. I'm not 100 percent sure who they got that from. Yeah. I. I just I never like when people put numbers like 52 billion, but it it was actually 52.2 billion. Well, that two. Point two is two hundred million dollars. Mm-hmm. Like you, you forget the scope. How, of how many Star Wars do we have to down. go through before we just see a Mickey Mouse cameo? Mm-hmm. Like his I think fig- this trilogy will get done in, in the next. One. Like on one of the covers of the old books is just going to be like a Mickey Mouse logo or something. So mm-hmm. they're going to use the lightsaber like in the old Disney <laughs> ones and make the mouse ears. <laughs> uh, I don't know if they'll use that in these franchises. But if they make another like cartoon series of it, like maybe, Rebels, something like that, you, I totally they might throw it in there. But this movie, while it felt long but also rushed, I kind of wish because there's a couple of times where it's like, oh no, we're gonna die, and then something happens, and they're like, oh, we're fine, or now we have more time and stuff like that. I wish one of those was either a less suspenseful or kind of cut out in general. Like I. I I think there was too many sections where it's like, shit, it's all ending, and then something happens. There's like and four like, different shit. times where we only have one chance for this. Yes. Yep. Also, just thinking about this, and it, I, I thought about it during the movie, I was really bothered by the bombers, because all up until this, we have like the Y-Wings and the TIE bombers that shoot proton torpedoes, or just energy balls. How come these bombers had to use physical bombs? That operated like a B seventeen bomber that we had to arm Which and drop. I, I, I appreciate. I appreciate the it. look and the aesthetic of them. It was it really cool. Me the fortress. It was really cool seeing all the rows come down. Yep. Going, I enjoyed that. I just didn't understand why. Yeah. Um, like I didn't understand why uh, the person, the bombardier, had just a button there when. Yeah, well, it's fucking technology. Why doesn't just one person pilot it? Or why doesn't everyone a have a button? Yeah. Like, or why don't ships have autopilot? Yeah. Oh, or, yeah. Or, or a droid flies it. Or <laughs> yeah, K2S8 was like, do you need me to help? K2SO. Whatever. This so, is a new one. So a, a, another also the, the, lot of reality, like, common the sense The marketing stuff made the just, dark BB-8 seem like he was going to be a lot more integral part, other yeah. than a snitch. Yeah. Like, they were sending it out to, like, reviewers and such. <laughs> He wasn't shit. Like you didn't even see him. You didn't even was, see like BB-8 take care of the black one. Or I was. And he <laughs> didn't. He didn't like. I was expecting him at least to X-ray through and like see uh-huh. that it was BB-8. But no, he just sees the trash can and everything. Yeah, he just he sees. Does, through and there's no walking. difference between. Yeah, there's no difference that you see. You don't see as like him running member. facial recognition or something. No, nothing. Um, I did like at least that I missed that I'm they like, knocked uh, BB-8's no. head off. Yes. And then he had to reattach it. He reattached it himself, which I didn't like, but I liked that it came off. So when the whole You didn't <laughs> like that he reattached it himself? I mean, he's a fucking ball. Oh, uh, I just... I, I don't really know. hard to do. I, it was, so, just I, rolls it was weird burn. that it was like... I laugh because I think when their seventh movie, before it came out, when they showed BB-8, <coughs> I think Disney was like, oh, no, it's not held on by magnets. It's the forest. And it was just like, I think, playing around. Mm-hmm. But now they're just like... Fuck it. Knock it off. It's magnets. It doesn't he, matter. He's, he's like Bender, where he's sometimes hollow on the inside and sometimes he's not. We can... He's a pachinko machine. <laughs> oh, him rolling around full of change. I'm like, he, he is really loud leaving the casino when he is full of change, but then when he sneaks into the guard tower, you don't hear any of it. Yeah. Or right. into the prison cells. You don't hear any of it. Yeah, he's going slow, but... I, I like Stutter Man. I, I really did. Stutter Man was good. And uh, honestly, one of my just... The ones that you don't see one of the characters... You, was the little alien putting the coins into BB-8? Uh-huh. I really did. And then I at the like end him. when I all the weird uh, dogs were running through, he was just like grabbing the pile of money that was everywhere. Yeah. yeah. yeah was, I liked him. That was kind of... That was good him. comical relief. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, any closing thoughts? Are, other than and, we need to go see it again... Go see it again. I honestly, I probably want to pay to go see it again. Well, you didn't pay theater. this time to go see it. Well, that was a Christmas present. Also, you your did. Christmas presents coming. So also, you didn't pay for dinner. Anywho, you, you know, I'm a good, said, I'm a good hey, date. I got this. I'm a good date. I'm a good yeah, date. Well, you don't even put out. I, do I don't even put out. I was gonna yes. say you're the one that has to put out. I paid. I paid for I'm, fucking six people tonight. I'm more expensive. Movie. Than that. I need to have. An, <laughs> I need. I need to have an order. It was. The movie was good. 
mm -hmm. see it again, but I probably would, yeah, probably wait till Blu-ray to yeah. watch it at home. Always do watch movies with good. And, what is, what is and your, this will have to be a commentary. What is your Ooh, machete man. order? If you're going to have someone that's never seen Star Wars sit down and watch them, what order do you watch them in? I will go first. Uh, four, five, six, two, three, seven, eight. Next. <laughs> uh, How they came out? Does Rogue One fall in there at all? Sure, why not? I know. I shit. I don't know. There's a what? machete Ooh. order by someone who put on there that, that cuts that's out. That's a I good think. idea. What about watching Rogue One before Episode Four? Hmm? But does. Ooh, I don't remember. I wonder what that'd be like. Shit. I think... And we'll never know. <sighs> we'll we'll never know. Nope. We will. If some of us will have children at some point, yeah. we can plan this out. So, we need to make a little more bookmark on our calendar. Well, and, uh, you're, I am sure the non-existence audience will remind us in yes. fucking 40 years once YouTube's dead. All right. What's, so the, what's the official machete order? I'm trying to look machete it up. Machete order is... Uh, Four, two, three, five, and six. So it's a flashback, and then you see what happens. One is excluded out. The full order is... I, I think you have... I, get, I don't like the one, older but I, I think you need to see it the just older to I get the, how shitty it is. The older I get, the more I understand why one is there. But I also don't like that it's its own movie. Yeah. If they would have taken everything from one and somehow fit it in to sprinkle it along two and three, I think I'd have a better idea. I, I, I'd like it. Right. What are you saying, Troy? So machete order is four, five, two, okay. three, oh, okay. six. Yep. Okay. Then it would be seven, eight. Yep. So I just had it after. Yeah, I it's after five. can't remember. I guess okay, fair enough. somewhere in there you read the synopsis of one. Yeah, yeah <laughs> well, yeah. It's Well, it shows, okay... Um, because episode five is a great, everything's gone to shit, now we're fucked. Which this mm. one kind of does that a little bit, but it doesn't seem as bad. And then you are reminded of how you get, don't blow your smoke into my computer. What's what's the computer's name again? Uh, this is, uh, baby doll? I, uh, it, it, it's uh, big smoke, isn't it? Malachor. Isn't it Project Snowfall? That is its it, official name. Snowflake. Snowfall. Is it Snowfall? It's Snowfall. Oh. When we built it, it was Project Snowfall, yes. Mm. Right. It, that was the operation of building it. Um, yeah, because then uh, at the end of 5, where everything's lost, you get to see how this became what it is. At the end of this one, I really... Do, I mean, all the hope is really lost. But it doesn't feel like it. There's a lot of optimism still going on. Yeah. I mean, literally, the resistance is one ship. Not even. Like, literally, well, it, I mean, if... It, if they were to capture the Millennium Falcon, it's done. Well, they do talk about their... Which was one thing. Like, they've sent out this signal to their allies and everything. And no one responded. No one responded. I like that. So is that... I, I like it, but the implications for that is that... Are they there? They got it. So someone's there. They don't do a very good are job. Are they going to do anything? Where, in the, next where the prequels did a too much of explaining the politics... This is doing nothing. Like, last night when Troy and I watched episode 7, I had to look up what the First Order, what the Resistance, and what the Republic, how those all integrated into each other. Which I still don't understand, even after you explain and it. And I think that's just... Also, okay, we don't know who Snoke is. We don't, like... We're inherently dealing with movies here, too. Your Cat 2, well, in this case, a two and a half hour frame. That's not really a whole lot of time to tell a super deep story. So, for if you can... Get a story that lets people talk, or get lets people enjoy it, and then for the people who care, who can look into it deeper, fine. But we're kind of used to like long form TV series now, where you have fifteen episodes, each so 15, hour long. Well, I'm, I'm used, hours, to, I'm used so. to the extended universe of Star Wars, where they laid the groundwork, and then a very dedicated uber nerds explained all the things mm -hmm. and every. It was, it's kind of like a uh, scientific theory where people would put out books, everyone would read them, and then everyone would kind of agree, no, the Thrawn one, that's what actually happened. You know, you, you put out a book, and then everyone would kind of agree, no, nah, that's kind of the, what the main thing was. All right, um, so going back to capping this off here, do we want to look at it in two ways of 
one as a movie and two as how it fits into storyline. Well, I think it has. I mean, we can't argue it fitting into storyline. Well, how we feel about story about where the, where like, it end, like okay, where it is for someone who doesn't care about Star Wars or diving into the Star Wars universe and just wants to see a movie. Oh, just wants to see. You have nine bucks to spare, and you just it's either this or go to Murder on the Orient. Sure. So just have the movie experience. Yes. I would put it. It's not quite a Hollywood blockbuster in the sense of there's just explosions and mm-hmm. stuff that you don't really need to think about Michael Bay Fest. There is something you would have to try and understand. Um, as a barometer, I would say I could take my grandma to this and she would be slightly entertained. It's a little too graphic mm-hmm. for her. There's a lot of stuff blowing up and such. But as a movie experience, I'd say it is decent. It is something that would be good to go see on a uh, Sunday matinee. I disagree. Okay. I, I think uh, that even if you hadn't seen any Star Wars at all, mm-hmm. it just gets totally broken up for a movie experience mm-hmm. with the comedy and with the just multiple Act 1s until the final battle. Then it's like, oh, Act 3, and then we're done. Then we have a stupid 10-second ending. Try spinning ending. Yeah. <laughs> then, and then, and then a stupid 10-second ending that could have been saved for after the credits. Oh my and god, why was that not an after the credit and then, scene? Yeah. Well, because probably they don't want to do an after credit scene. Um, I think this was... They're Disney. They have Marvel. They, they should. I They're think this so... was moving more towards a mainstream Star Wars, where you have the comic release. For someone who's not super into the storyline, you have, oh, here's the joke to make it fun. Yeah, there's a little tension, shooting, they're in danger. Oh, another joke. More in that sense. I'm For people who... So for a casual viewing, I'd say it's more appropriate for if you're looking for something with a more serious storyline. Even if you don't care about Star Wars, it does seem a little fragmented and doesn't really build up the suspense. It should. And then moving into like actual Star Wars storyline implications, you, it, it does seem to have progressed the storyline very little in a lot of ways. Like we do, we do see Rey and Kylo's progression a lot. But then outside of that, and, there's not a whole I do lot. also want to pose progression. Going from the impulsive mm-hmm. fighter to more of a, like... Not oh, so much Finn. He's not so much... Finn really doesn't do shit. Finn should have died. Finn I'll should have died. I say it. Finn I and Rose really, should have died. I, I, not that I don't like him. I just think he should have died. Mm-hmm. Same way I think Leia should have died. Yep. He's still a coward we, in we this. We could have had three major people die. In this movie, four if you count Snow, but I don't. And, and I don't it would have been very good. I don't. That's one thing I don't understand is that with the whole Game of Thrones becoming more and more popular, and people saying like, "Oh, you can kill off main characters. You can. It's uh-huh. it's not I taboo. Love it. I love it's, it. It's it's great. It keeps audiences on their toes. Even with a big franchise like this, it would have <laughs> fit the story." It would have fit, and it would have been, made sense, and people mm-hmm. wouldn't have been pissed. We don't, especially need... with Carrie Fisher. They know she died. They don't have to be like, "Oh, they're just getting rid of her because she was asking too much money." No, she's fucking dead. We all, yeah, we Sorry, have a li- we have a finite amount of film that we can use her. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. So, just that's yeah. Yep. Yeah, I. Uh, no, I. Now that we've talked about it, I feel a little better about it. I'm no. still disappointed. Not as much disappointed as I was when I saw Rogue One and there was no tech school. Nothing will <laughs> take up my Jesus. my disappointment in that. But overall, it was Star Wars. I think we can all agree on that. Mm-hmm. Yep. We can all agree that there was it, a lot of Millennium Falcon. There was a lot of Millennium Falcon. It, it, Not as much of it breaking down. It didn't break down this episode. Uh, no, they, they got were. their gun scraped across some stuff. But yeah, it worked just but, fine. But none of that, like... You fly for also, a bit. I gotta go fix something real watching, quick. Blah, blah, blah. Watching Rogue No, I gotta bypass the compressor. Watching yeah. <laughs> uh, Force Awakens last night, uh, Han makes a or uh, Ray makes a point that says you, it's really hard to fly the Millennium Falcon without a co-pilot. Chewie does fucking fine. He gets he's like great. Yeah, he's, he's great. He, the, he is fantastic. Gets like eight puffins in there, and he's what, so was Chewie flying the Millennium Falcon all the other movies, and Han just like. Playing Tetris over there. <laughs> no, that, Chewie's the actual pilot. No, Chewie just is flying and he can't reach a button, so he it's grabs Mar- a puffin and just chucks it across. It's Mark Simpson with the fucking. I do like the puffin. 
he, he brushes one out of the way there when it, like, jumps up. But I, I just wanted to, like, jump on a big red button and have, like, the ship go boom, boom, and just <laughs> smack it out of the way and it take back off again. So this will be our final thought. Yeah. We, we will be ending at the end of this. And it is a question for both of you. And it's a two-part question. How excited are you for the Han Solo movie that will be the next Star Wars movie? And how excited are you for Episode Nine? I haven't seen Rogue One yet. Fair enough. I need to see that before I see the Han Solo movie, in my opinion. Okay. It's a Han Solo movie. I and it's another mm-hmm. like before to, to to where he meets Luke. Because and... fact of the matter is, we're going to be getting a Star Wars movie every year. Yep. Mm-hmm. No matter how much we don't like this movie, it, it's guaranteed. Yeah, that's already yeah. planned out. This is no matter how much we, the, the internet nerds, and anyone who watches this gets doesn't like it or gets mad at it, it's going to come again. It's like an election. You can be mad at it as much as you want. There's going to be another one and another one. This is the Star Wars we have. I as much, wonder... Even if we don't like it, this is what we have. We have to live with it. All the problems we have, have to. this is what we got. Yep. Yeah. So, I mean, I'm not overly excited. I'm just... I'm going to go with back with my uh, original feeling about this movie. Meh. Yeah. Do Meh. we know where the Han Solo film... Is it him before all the movies? Is it him in Definitely the younger movies? because Donald Glover is playing Lando Calrissian. So okay. we're looking at probably a 20-something, 30-something. Okay, so before the third and fourth movie? Right? I would third, say fourth, so on? either immediately after the third or during the third. Okay. Well, I, I would say that the, the clones are probably... The Republic is probably in power, not quite yet the Empire. I... I'm excited, or well, okay. I'm interested to see the movie. No, but in yeah, probably but after Rogue One, which mm-hmm. I enjoyed, mm-hmm. it's not really what I'm looking for. I'm excited. I, I'm interested to see this story continue. Yeah. The Han Solo film, I'm sure, will be good, mm-hmm. and I hope they make him a more dynamic character, which he already is. Mm-hmm. He's not static, and he did. But I wish I. Yo, but I w- wish it. I don't know. I hope it's. I kind of hope it flips things on its heads and show a side of him and makes him a really interesting character and not just like, oh, I'm doing good, which he's not. He's a traitor and a thief and stuff like that. Smuggler. Smuggler, yeah. 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 Um, as for the ninth movie, I wish... I'm less excited for it than I was for this one because Seven left me super excited to see where they'd take it because I was really hoping they would break typical Star Wars fashion and do something way out there and take a storyline and make it super interesting and not be stuck on oh good versus bad and we have our good and bad characters which are not, they they made it a little less like that but I'm less excited for 9 than I was for 8 here I will be interested to see if Kylo evolves beyond his impulsive self that he's shown to be now and I'm interested to see how Rey becomes, whether she becomes a leader or tries to be on her own, because inevitably it's good versus bad. So do we inevitably end up with a Grey Jedi that was in books that aren't canon anymore and stuff like that? Or do we continue to have this fight between both sides? Yeah. Final... Any, uh, any pr- quick any predictions on the name of Episode Nine? My vote is Jar Jar Binks Rises. The last, last Jedi. <laughs> last Jedi Mark II. Not quite the last Jedi, but kind of going out of style. <laughs> we That's ran. so 2012. <laughs> <laughs> Mickey Mouse Rises. Um, as always, thank you for joining me, folks. Uh, I'm Justin Daisy, joined by Mike and Troy. Uh, we are all in this one together. I'll see you in the next one.